What's up everybody? How's everybody doing today? Hope you had a fantastic, what is it, Sunday? I think it's Sunday, right? Sunday. Hope everybody had a fantastic Sunday. I'm over here just grinding at the house. Yeah, ungating tips you gave in the call are fire. They work, brother. Fantastic, Andres. And Lisa, hello, what's up? Are you in a relationship? Yes, I am, twerks for Sean's. Um, where do you buy your supplies, boxes, poly bags, etc.? That's a great question. So, in the beginning, we used Uline to buy our bags and stuff and our boxes. Uh, but Uline, they call, they charge a lot of money to ship the products to you. So, shipping could be anywhere from fifty to one hundred fifty dollars, depending on how large your order is. So, we stopped using Uline. And now we prefer to use a local box distributor and a local supplies distributor. So we get our tape and our stickers from one supplier and then we get our boxes from another supplier. So I recommend for you Googling just, you know, local box distributors and taking that information, reaching out to them because they will have competitive prices. And then also you could build a relationship with them and kind of harvest that relationship. So there's definitely a lot of opportunity there. Let me see here, I got some other questions here. Um, AMZ Seller Forever said, are you going to create a private IG group? No, I don't think so. You're talking about close friends? Um, we may do it in the future. Right now, we don't plan on doing it. We, we don't plan on creating another close friends for a while. Right now, our primary focus is to um, help the members of eSellers RI grow. Y'all killed it this weekend. In regards to what? What's up, everybody? So if you're just joining, put in the comments. I want to know where you're from. Let me know where you're from. I'm over here in New Jersey just bumping and grinding away. I'm here to provide you value. So any questions you have, now is the time to ask them. Pretty much questions about anything. Um, I'm very versed in Amazon sales. I also have some tips just on life and motivation. So really anything you need, I am here for you. You let me know. Any questions, have them slide in right now. Um, thank you everybody for joining me on this Sunday night. Super excited to have you here. I know you could be doing anything in the world, but you're here with me and I respect that. We got London in the house. That's what's up. Who's that? Harvey from London. Welcome. We got Newport Beach. Where else we got? Usually we got people from all over the world in here. So this is super exciting. I love talking to all y'all and getting to meet all y'all because like here we are, right? It's 2020. Instagram has connected me with people all over the world, like literally all over the world. And I'm forever grateful for that opportunity because a lot of you I would have never met otherwise. So thank you for joining me on this journey. And I'm so happy to have you along for the ride. Uh, we got Brooklyn, New York in the house. Okay, Ottawa. Where else we got? Another BK guy. I, I'm pretty sure Brooklyn is the zip code with the most Amazon sellers in the United States. Now, I could be incorrect on that, but I'm pretty sure I'm accurate. So, that's a thing. But listen, if you got any questions, now is the time to ask them. We got someone from Toronto in the house. Pretty much any, I'm talking like anything, any now is the time. Brooklyn, what's up? Toronto. Hello from where? Louisiana. Got Louisiana in the house. Is it too late to start Amazon FBA? Would you still start today? Absolutely, it is not too late to start Amazon FBA. So I was just looking at st some statistics, statistics and well, right now, of over 60% of Amazon sellers are third-party sellers. And currently, there's over 115 million Prime members in the United States. That is one-third of the population that you have access to. You don't have to market. You don't have to go do Facebook ads or Google ads to drive traffic to your website Amazon has created the traffic and the traffic is already there the customers are already there so absolutely it is not too late to start selling on Amazon if anything right now is the best time to start selling on Amazon because the opportunity to crush it is huge especially with COVID-19 it's really driven a lot of e-commerce sales 
to Amazon specifically, but has also taken your regular brick and mortar customer and brought them to sites like Amazon to purchase products because of convenience and fear, right? And that convenience is hard to get away from. Once you start getting one to two day shipments when you're purchasing products on Amazon, it's hard to go back to that. You know, let me order from this site where it takes five days or let me go drive to the store on a Friday evening when I could be spending that time with my family or spending that time with my kids or visiting grandma, whatever the case may be. It's tough to go back from that convenience once you've experienced it. United Kingdom in the house. Hustling never stops. Absolutely. AMZ seller. No, it's Crooklyn. <laughs> I said Brooklyn. Um, what are the odds that I get suspended from a restricted product on Amazon? They had the listing for a long time and then it got removed. Um, the odds of you getting suspended if they removed a listing, slim to none, unless you go trying to go create new listings for that. You know, if they made a decision to remove that listing, they made it for a reason. So it could be very complicated. You could run into some issues if you're trying to recreate that listing under another listing. Who do we got here? I don't know who that is. Yanni, what's up, my friend? So you should be good over there, Alex. Long, long time listener, first time caller. Long Island City, Queens here. Nice, dope, man. Thanks for joining me, man. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, Mariana, or Marion, what's up? Fuck, always. We gotta get a jar, Marion. Every time I say that, I'm gonna have to put a dollar in the jar. Cause you'll be a rich woman at this point. Um, what categories do you recommend starting out in wholesale? So here's the thing. Don't limit yourself. So many times, sellers all the time are like, let me only start in personal care. Let me, I find pet supplies are really good sellers. Let me focus on pet supplies. And the way I see it is you're limiting your vision. You're limiting your opportunity. You should be focusing on all of the categories. Now, some great break-in categories, health and beauty, grocery, because you're gonna find SKUs that are moving a lot of units because they're ranked well and you're going to be able to make a few bucks on them but really you should be reaching out to suppliers who carry all types of products who carry all types of product lines in different categories because the wider your SKU count the more opportunity you have to make money off of customers because the what customers want are the products you have so let's say you only have two products in stock uh, that, that only gives you two opportunities to reach customers if you have 10 product you now have 10 opportunities 100 so on and so forth the more products you have in stock the more opportunity you have to reach customers listen this is your time ask away here is amazon better than shopify i think so personally shopify you got to drive customers to your site amazon like i was saying before amazon already has all the customers on their site they're already doing the work for you they're advertising they're out there they have trucks on the road they have commercials on radio they have prime tv they have you know amazon music they have all of these different sources to drive traffic to their website so there's no money spent on you acquiring the customer unless you're selling a white label or a private label product where you have to drive some traffic through advertising and get it in front of the customer's face but other than that the customer is there especially when it comes to wholesale when you sell wholesale on amazon people are shopping for brand name products that they recognize products that they have faith in already that they know are good that they know exist and they know what the quality is so if you're buying Old Spice whether you get it from CVS from Walgreens from Kroger you know from any shopping store or you get it from Amazon you know it's the same Old Spice you know it's the same deodorant from wherever you get it from so the opportunity is alive and well all right H H H Hav Juanal said, Hey Eric, I got my listing taken down because I complained to notice at Amazon.com for a hijacker on my listing, but they ended up taking the whole listing. 
Has this ever happened to you? No, this has not happened to us. What I recommend is reaching out to seller support, creating a case, supply, supplying them with the documentation of the email that you originally sent them, the screenshot of the hijacker who went on your listing to sell on your listing, and also to prevent this in the future, you should be enrolled in brand registry. If you're enrolled in brand registry, it will really limit the amount of damage a hijacker can do on your listing, and it will give you a lot more control on your listing. So I recommend getting your product trademarked if it hasn't been trademarked yet and enrolling in brand registry to prevent this from happening again because all right, this is short term solution, right? How do you solve this right now? Create a case, supply the documents, may get fixed, may not fixed. It's really in, in the end, it's up to Amazon, but how do you prevent it in the future? It's all about being proactive instead of reactive. So being proactive allows you to handle the situation before it happens opposed to reacting when it happens. Does that make sense, Havuano? Tips on the first email to a supplier. Yeah, it should just be short and sweet. Hey, I'm Eric from Amazon Lit. I'm an e-commerce distributor. I'm inquiring about setting up an account. Can you please email me over your catalog along with any account applications? You know, best regards, your name signed with whatever owner, COO. I can't stress it enough. One of the most important things that people miss when they send out emails to suppliers is they're sending it from like, an email address that was created in 2004 so it'll be like stephanie2004 at yahoo.com like that is the furthest from a professional email account that you can see you know especially if it has like drug references i see emails all the time like johnny blaze 1742 it's like what like like i don't even want to respond to that email first of all because it just it gives you a, a representation of who that per person possibly is now it could, it could be completely wrong they could be a, a wonderful person who's ready to spend lots of money with you but there's a lot to be said about first impressions and i recommend getting a, a domain email so it'd be like eric at amazonlit.com you know or stephanie at fastproducts.com so pay the little bit of money get the domain email and then start emailing them as well and and all emails should start off with a greeting like hello good afternoon they should have some sort of body where it basically says you know hey i'm eric i'm reaching out I'm an e-commerce distributor. I'm inquiring about setting up a wholesale account. Can you please send me over any account applications in your wholesale catalog? Talk soon. And then it requires a, a salutation, you know, like uh, look forward to hearing from you. Talk soon. Excited to get this started. Signed by your, by your name. And under your name should be what your position is, whether that's purchaser, owner, co-founder, COO, CEO. It should be then followed by your company, the name of your company, and then it should have your phone number and your email address. Like these are just consistent things that if you look at any professional email, they have that. But I find that a lot of Amazon sellers, they lack this information. So I'm telling you right now that that's information that you need. No problem, Amazon NZA. Amazon's uh I'm doing this as a side hustle. Okay, we got Jana Jean doing this as a side hustle. Doing this as a side hustle, trying to get debt free. Can I do wholesale without a warehouse? Yes, you can do wholesale without a warehouse. Now you have a few options. You really have three options. And maybe I'm missing a fourth board, but right now the, the only ones that come to my mind are these uh first three Jana Jean. So you can A, ship products directly to Amazon. Now you have to take into account their prep service fees. So if you type in um, prep service in the search bar at Amazon at the top right, their fee structure will come up. Um, I think it's like 30 cents per sticker. Then they have additional, I think it's like 70 cents for a poly bag, so on and so forth. Then they have like bubble wrap fees, like all these different fee structures. Um, so that will add to your cost per product and then that needs to be deducted because it will have an effect on your gross margins which in turn has an effect on your net margins but it's possible i know a lot of people who early on they didn't have warehouses you know they didn't want to ship all these products to their house so they shipped them direct to amazon and actually through our wholesale company we ship a lot of products direct to amazon then you have the second option which would be a prep center now prep centers 
can be costly really depends on you know what area what location your prep center is how far you have to ship your product from your supplier to the prep center uh, but that is an option well as well and essentially what they do is they prep your products to send them to Amazon for a fee per unit and obviously the larger amount of volume you're sending to that prep center the cheaper per unit it will cost and then option number three is communicate with these wholesale suppliers let them know hey supplier uh, you know I'm operating out of a residential um, building right now I'm operating out of my house like do you ship to residential areas and they may say absolutely we do not a problem it's only all you're gonna need is a lift gate and then you say wow that's great you know thanks for letting me know I'm gonna place an order uh, by Friday I'll have an order to you so you want to communicate with that, that with them because most likely you can get these products delivered to your house and you just have to be there to unload them and if they have a lift gate they're gonna literally pull the pallets off the truck, drop them to the ground, and then they can wheel them over to your garage or you can carry them up your stairs, whatever it is. And it's all about putting in that hustle, putting in that work early on. If you're willing, if you can make money with not having a warehouse in wholesale, then, then you're gonna you're gonna fucking skyrocket when it comes to getting a warehouse. But absolutely, to answer your question, Jane and Jean, you do not need a warehouse. It is not a prerequisite, but it is super helpful. Yeah, any tips on, on gating faster so? Who's this Harvey Brown said any tips on, on gating faster absolutely so whenever it says request approval you always want to follow the prompts and I'm sure a lot of you know what I'm talking about you go to import an ASIN into Amazon you know you click add a product you click list to sell and then it's like all of a sudden request approval a lot of people stop right there you always want to follow the prompts click the prompts see what they are requesting in order for you to get approved is it um, an invoice from a distributor you know do you need some sort of documentation stating that you can sell this product like what type of information do you need to get ungated now, if you can get that information, what I recommend is purchasing the minimum order quantity to get approval to sell in certain categories, which right now on Amazon is 10 units. I've never seen it more for any other category or brand to get approved to sell in. It's 10 units. So what that looks like for us and can look like for you is purchasing one case or two cases if it comes six per case. So you purchase one case from your distributor along with the other products that you're ordering so yeah you might be spending two three dollars a unit so 24 36 dollar investment but to possibly open up the floodgates to make a lot more money selling in this brand new category of products that you can have access to that you didn't originally have access to so that's huge that's a game changer and then also last ditch effort you could use on gating services what do we got here we got Alicia Peacock, 21, waving. More diversity in the company, absolutely. How accurate is the Amazon fee calculator? The, the website, like the Amazon calculator website, it's pretty accurate, it's pretty on point. It's pulling the information directly from Amazon. It's probably more accurate than any other Chrome extension you'd be using. So it's pretty, pretty accurate. Also, some other things. Um, rev seller is pretty accurate. I've seen some minor discrepancies with that, but it has a lot of information. Something else that's pretty accurate is the, um, I got it right here. What's it called? The Amazon FBA calculator. It's a little blue icon widget in the top right of your Chrome extensions. I've been selling, all right, Harvey Brown. I've been selling on Amazon for two months now. First month I did 2K, huge. July I did 11K, awesome. ROI now. I did 11K return on investment now. 19%. Really pushing suppliers for a bit more discount, but they are being stiff. Any tips? Yeah, keep purchasing from them. Listen, to operate your company at a 19%, um, well, ROI, I don't know. I don't know if that's good for your company because uh, are your other products you're, you're buying, are they a dollar, you know? 
Um, so you sell a thousand units to make 200 bucks because you're only making 20 cents per unit or is that ROI on $10 products, on $20 products? Because that's really gonna determine how much profit you're making at the end of the day because ROI of 19% on a, on a dollar product is 19 cents. ROI on a, of 19% on a $10 product is $1.90. You know, ROI of 19% on a $20 product is now $2.80. So like the higher the cost of your inventory, the more are that effect ROI is going to have on your, on your net profits. And that's why we really like to analyze gross and net profits instead of ROI. Now, something we do consider with ROI, and then I'll get to your question, is absolutely you want to consider ROI because if you have to spend a dollar to make a dollar, dollar fifty, then I'm all over that, you know. But if I have to spend ten or twelve dollars to make a dollar, I'm not so I'm not much interested in that anymore. So definitely ROI needs to be considered. But Harvey, you should really be focusing on your gross profit margin, which is taking your left with and dividing it by your listing price. So let's say you're left with $5, product was listed at $20, that is a 25% gross margin. And now in order to get your net margin, you would subtract your expenses, which is labor, warehouse, shipping, gas, from that $5 gross margin, and that would give you your net margin. Um, so yeah, the tips to continue to get discounted prices from these distributors is keep placing orders. Keep placing orders. We get some of the healthiest discounts from suppliers that we keep spending money with. You know, money talks. It's all about the green. People are in this business to make money. So if you're not spending a substantial amount of money, the chances of you getting a substantial discount are slim to none. Just the other day, and this is an example, just the other day I put together, there's a quick maybe $25,000 order. Um, this company we place millions of dollars worth of orders with a year, probably four to five million dollars worth of orders a year with. Um, so we, we have some pull and we're able to request discounts. And the way it works with this specific company is we literally just submit a file with the price that we're requesting. So let's say the product in their catalog was $5. I want it for $450. In my order, I'm going to submit $450. And then it's our account rep's responsibility to either yay or nay that $450. And if they nay that $450, then they come back at 480 or maybe five's the limit and they come back with that price on the invoice and I know that's the best they can do. Long story short, the original order was about 24K after I submitted requested pricing and there were some out of stocks, it turned out to be about, I think it was like 18 or 19K. I re-went through the order, ended up adding some quantities because he was able to give me some discounts on some of these products. And then we ended up saving about $1,400 in discounts. You know, $1,400 on a, on a $20,000 order, that's a pretty substantial discount. You know, that's that's what, a 7% discount. So that's a pretty substantial discount when you're spending $20,000. I filled out all that information by purchasing the minimum quantity, et cetera. However, they are taking six to eight weeks for approval. Yeah, right now, Amazon's super backed up. Don't get discouraged though. You're not the only one experiencing that. Everybody's experiencing Amazon being backed up. So it's okay. Just be patient, send them a friendly reminder, you know, maybe early, mid next week. Hey, just looking for an update on this case, submit the case ID with it or submit it directly through your case log at Amazon. Give them a friendly nudge, but you're not alone here. A lot of people are spending a lot of time waiting for these cases to be responded to. So it's not just, it's not just you, my friend. It's not just you. What else we got here? Thumbs up from L. Chenvi. Harvey Brown still in gating all categories regardless. Yes, the website. I do electronics. Harvey Brown, you probably have a high return rate with electronics. Am I correct? I know a, a lot of sellers who sell electronics and uh, have a high return rate. By the way, Fresca, just like LaCroix, it's like the most flavorless drink. Yet I drink it all the time. It has absolutely no flavor. Actually, I personally think it tastes like shit. But it's got zero calories, zero sugar. It's, it's basically water with sodium. So it gives a little flavor to your tongue. But 
essentially it tastes like garbage and yet I buy it every single week and I drink it religiously so answer me that what else we got here um, from A to Z what's average time for someone from A to Z average time for someone really depends on how much work you're willing to put put in but if you're willing to really put in work there's no reason why you can't turn a part-time Amazon hustle to a full-time Amazon hustle in one year so in 12 months there's no reason why you can't quit your current nine to five and focus solely on selling on Amazon if you put in the work now everybody's got their own learning curve everybody learns at different paces everybody learns slightly differently some take longer some take less but if you're putting in that work and investing the time, then absolutely you can build a successful Amazon business in one year. Start with 20, turn that to 24, then to 28, then to 32, then to 37, then to 45. And before you know it, and I'm talking this is bi-weekly, so you just turn 20 to 45 in, in you know, eight, nine weeks. So two, two and a half months, you turn 20,000 into 45,000, and then just you keep rinse, wash, and repeat, rinse, wash, and repeat. To answer your question, that was uh, Christian Domingo. Also, click the link in our bio, Christian. There's tons of resources there to help you scale. Uh, not only do we have tons of free content in on our YouTube channel, also on Instagram, tons of free information. But there's some other options is there as well. You should check them out. Do you guys sell in the kitchen category? We sell in all the categories. I never want to limit myself. I want to make as much money as possible. I'm talking pet supplies, patio, baby, kitchen, health and household, personal care, grocery, uh, even a little bit of apparel, some electronics if, if we're getting for a good price, like any category we're selling in. Janie Jean said, how do you find distributors, wholesalers that are actually profitable? The ones I keep finding who will work with smaller sellers, the pricing just doesn't seem to work. So I end up defaulting to OA. So uh, Jada Jean, this is what I'm gonna want you to do. As soon as this live's over, go to our YouTube channel, the link's in our bio, and there's a video, it's called How to Find Profitable Suppliers. I want you to watch that video. There's tons of information in that video. Watch that video thoroughly and then implement the, the, the tasks described in that video and I promise you you get a couple, a couple healthier suppliers out of that watching that video. And also, your, your prerequisites might be too high. I see this all the time. People set their prerequisites super high. It's like, I'm not purchasing a product from a wholesaler or distributor unless I'm making 40% gross margin on it. That is ridiculous. Maybe your prerequisites are too high. I don't know if that's the case for you. You haven't told me that. But from my experience, a lot of people I run into, their prerequisites are too high. In the beginning, it makes sense to pull in 12%, you know, because 12% of $1,000 is still $120. If you're placing 10, you know, $1,000 orders a month, that's still $1,200 in, in profits that you're bringing back into your pocket. So sometimes you have to sacrifice margins early on to build the relationship long term so you can take those 12% margins to 18% margins to 20% margins. JC Hustle. I've only done grocery and I'm stuck at 40K a month. What other categories should I look at? All the categories. All the categories. You should be looking at all the categories. Health and personal care is huge right now, especially because you know what's selling really well? Soap, shampoos, they're moving like hot cakes out here in the streets. It's crazy. We just I'm sure a lot of you saw we just ordered two hundred thousand dollars worth of tuna fish. Like, so shit's selling right now. G Zeb said, Is it smart to raise price on low stock? while you wait for restock to come in, or should you go out of stock? Uh, we raise price. I always, especially if it's a private label product, um, and even if it's just a regular wholesale or OA product or RA product, um, because what we like to do is 
give the customer access to us. So instead of those last 15 units, instead of selling them out in an hour, I'd rather let them spread out, you know, two, three days. Make a little bit of more, make a little bit more money, and especially if it's a private label product, and the difference between you raising your price and you not raising your price is the difference between you having inventory in stock or not having inventory in stock. If you raise your price a little, it will keep your BSR down because people will still be able to purchase your product. So the BSR trend of it going up and raising will be slower than if you were just to complete go out of stock nobody purchases your products for a week opposed to you selling one or two units a day for a week and then you restock and you're able to get that BSR back down so I would recommend high raising the price so I should I register so this is Amazon's uh, should I register an LLC before starting my Amazon seller account or can I start as a private person I want to start as a side hustle, but scale it up over time. So personally, listen, you can start as a private entity, um, but if if your mind is already in this headspace that you're you're trying to do this and really scale it, then you just want to start from the rip as an LLC. On our YouTube channel, maybe posted two weeks ago, we go through the process of setting up an LLC. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you know, you go to a government website and you, you type in your information, you put in the address, the business address. If you don't have a business address, we recommend you go get one, um, whether that's at a UPS store, um, getting a box because a PO box won't work. But it's so simple to create an LLC and it's cheap too. It's like 200 bucks to create an LLC. And also there's tax benefits. You can, you know, write off some of these business meeting dinners and write off uh, a percentage of your home for a home office. Like right now I'm in my home office. This is my office. I write I write off this space. So you get some tax benefits and also it's called a limited liability company because it limits your liability and separates your assets from your business. So if anything god forbid ever happens, you can actually separate your business from your personal. So it's huge for protecting your money. So I recommend going LLC. You look like god long hair, big headed Jesus. <laughs> Fucking dippy. <laughs> Looking to turn it into full time before my time in the military is up. First of all, respect your service, man. Appreciate your service. Thank you for serving our country. And yeah, man, full time's definitely an option. And three years, that's plenty of time to get it full time. On some of my ASINs, so Yanni0525 said, on some of my ASINs, my price is lower than the what the current buy box is, and I have talked with Amazon about the issue, and they keep saying that nothing is wrong with the buy box. What should I do? Uh, Yanni, nothing is wrong with the buy box. I know a lot of sellers are talking about stuff's wrong with the buy box. I said it. I think when it first happened over a month ago, I said it 30 days ago, nothing's wrong with the buy box. Amazon is a master machine. Everything they do is for calculated reasons. They're prioritizing shipments based on fulfillment center quantities. So what I would suggest you do is A, you have three options. A, you can keep dropping your price lower until you win a percentage of the buy box. B, or you really have four options. B, you can run some small advertisements on those products, offer coupons and deals. Three, you can hold off and not do anything and just let it ride out until the other sellers sell out. Four, you can stop focusing on those couple of shit ASINs and start focusing on purchasing wider inventory to cover your SKU count so you have access to more customers. Four should be do it be done without a doubt and options one through three, you're really gonna have to take a calculated effort based on what you think, based on the keep of charts and based on your competitive sellers. Christian Domingo said, thank you, man. Appreciate you sharing. Anytime, my friend. Wag said, any tip for private label from your experience? Yeah, private label, there's a lot of opportunity. You just want to do your research. And what, what I like to do, what we like to do, is if we're going to go private label, we want to source usually two products at a time. Because the, the amount of effort that goes into reaching out to the supplier, finding the manufacturer, uh, setting up the test order, setting up the shipment, getting it sent to your warehouse or Amazon, it's like I want to do that for two products at once. 
So if I could do that for two products at once, absolutely. Like just the other day, uh, probably at the beginning of the month, last month, because it's August already, we created four private label products in, in, in a couple days. Um, we got them shipped to us and now I only created two of the listings so far but the other two just need to be finalized and created and they're up and ready to go as well so if you're already doing the work we recommend um, definitely make sure your the niche you're getting into isn't too saturated it isn't too competitive you know I see a lot of people trying to get into health supplements a health supplement is super competitive super competitive market you gotta be spending a lot of money on advertising to be getting a foothold in that in that supplement industry next question do you show at least 50k yeah absolutely we see seven figure gross profits or i mean net profits annually so i have a question please let me talk to you all right this is the place man this is the question place you're here uh definitely fba but i don't like drop shipping i don't really fuck with it andres how do you ship in chocolate and meltable items when dealing with the 10 day wait? You don't. So, Andres, right now, so chocolates melt. So, chocolates are what Amazon consider meltables. They also consider certain types of gummy vitamins, gummy bears, meltables as well. And from May 1st to September 30th, um, you cannot ship meltables to Amazon to be sold FBA. You have to ship them FBM. But from our experience, and I'm sure a lot of your experiences, when you ship chocolate in the middle of August, it is hot as fuck outside. It shit gets melted in the truck. Customer gets it. They're super complained or super dis dissatisfied, start to complain. They received hot chocolate um, mix or drink, really, because it's all melted in the box instead of the chocolate bar that they wanted. So we recommend not selling chocolates or meltables from May 1st to August or till October 1st or September 31st we recommend not selling uh, meltables to prevent any issues from happening and a great way to see if a product is meltable is check that keep a chart my friends check that keep a chart all the information is always in the keep a chart GG521 said what do you suggest for Amazon inventory limitation in Q3 and Q4 get you get that IPI up also if you're limited if you have limited space you're gonna to have to be listing a lot of stuff FBM you know a lot of stuff FBM but don't be discouraged get that IPI back up and they'll open up the floodgates for your inventory do not be discouraged and right now you got what is it the 16th I think it is so you got 14 days to get that IPI up it's going to be very hard in 14 days to be completely transparent. It's going to be very challenging, but you should be taking the recommendations, looking at your stranded inventory, looking at your excess inventory, looking at your sell-through rate. You got to be doing that. What state is your LLC registered in and why? It's registered in New Jersey because that's where I live. You can get some tax benefits in other states. Mad, Mad, Madri said, do you think the seller name on Amazon should be different than your entity name? It's not a requirement. It doesn't have to be different. Ours isn't different. You could make it different. It's really your preference. Ours is the same. You can, you can create an LLC and have a DBA. Um, or your seller name could be completely different, but you got to make sure when you're providing your name to um, suppliers that the name on the invoice matches some sort of information on your Amazon account or else getting approval will be complicated. EZMog said, when getting an exclusive with a brand, do you have an attorney to write out the contract? No, I write out all the contracts. I literally... I do some research, I write out the contract. It's a pretty straightforward contract. Uh, you don't need an attorney to get involved in that um, because it's not like it's not like you're taking control of their brand. You know, you're just selling their products. So it's it's pretty straightforward. You do not need a, an attorney to write out one of those contracts. And actually, if anybody's interested on August, whatever, not this coming weekend, whatever the following weekend is, we're hosting a two-day webinar. It's called the Brand Workshop. And um, it's all about 
how we obtain multi-million and multi-billion dollar brands to represent them on Amazon. Like what information we provide to them, what type of decks we give to them to make sure that we are the choice when they go to pick an online selling partner. It's a two day event, three hours each day. It's gonna be revolutionary. If anybody's interested in that, send me a DM. There is a fee to attend. Uh, because there's going to be a lot of information provided it's a small group of people it's going to be hosted on zoom it's going to be a ton of content it's going to be game changer so we'd love to have you there if you want to attend that brand registry send me a dm and i'll get you an invoice just send me your email in the dm and i'll send it over to you it's really going to be a game changer what do you think of having automated Amazon store? I'm, I'm yet to meet anybody with a profitable, where they made their investment back on an automated Amazon store. Do you outsource PPC? Um, we have, right now we're not. We're only spending about $7,000 a month on PPC, uh, but we have in the past. And it wasn't really outsourced, we just paid for a company to manage it for us. Um, any tips for reaching out to brands directly? Yeah, provide them value. Find their pain points. Look at their listings. Provide them value. Simon Sells, what should I cover in order for them to possibly do business with me? You Value, man. You know, less about what you want and more about what you're going to provide to them. All the time. People always want, like, to sell themselves, right? You need to sell solutions. Stop selling yourself and sell a solution to a problem and a lot of your problems will be solved. What part of New Jersey packed up a travel nursing gig in East Orange? Would love to check your warehouse out. Yeah, we don't do warehouse visits, but we're, we're not far from East Orange actually. We're pretty close to East Orange. Um, but we don't do warehouse visits. What are some tips on getting into doing Amazon with a partner? Uh, make sure you're willing to delegate tasks out accordingly. You know, you don't want to have a business partner where you're putting in a 90% of the work and splitting the profits 50-50. Make sure there's some balance there. And if it's a friend, make sure you remain friends. Do not let the partnership relationship ruin your friendship. You know, Sebastian and I, we've remained very close friends for the past 18 years. We were busy, we're business partners on two different companies. And like, it's just about communication, really. So if you're feeling angry, if you're feeling frustrated, communicate that shit with the person. Don't let it sit there and, and, and harvest into a resentment. Corey X Ms. D said, my store is well aged, but I have shut it off for one month and now I only have one product in my store. My price matches the buy box, but I couldn't get a percentage of the buy box. Dude, you got one product, man. Cause to be completely transparent, you gotta sell more products. Like the amount of energy you're spending worrying about the one product you have in stock selling, you could be selling 15, 20, 30 other products. Stop focusing on that one ship product. And to move that one ship product, you could do what I said before, drop pricing, advertise, hold off, wait, or sell more products. Amazon Za said, I see there are a lot of tools out there, automated repricers, product research tools to support sellers, but their monthly cost can ramp up pretty quickly which tools are essential for newbies um yeah so i have the five most essential tools a lot first of all sounds like nobody's watching our youtube channel who's in these lives so i like 90 percent of these questions are answered in in detail on our youtube channel um so amazon za check out our youtube channel it's we have a video top five repricers you need I mean, top five Chrome extensions you need to run a business. You know, and the only one that's not talked about in there is a is a, is a uh, repricer. You need a repricer as well. And then as soon as you get those five Chrome extensions and a repricer and a UPC scraper, like that's it. Those seven things, that's all you need to run your Amazon business. And then you can look into softwares like Fetcher or Inventory Lab to track profits and cost of goods. Uh, the two-day event is uh, 
the two day event is nine ninety seven. Just send me an if if you're interested in the two day event, send me a, a DM with your email address and I'll get you over an invoice. It's almost sold out. We only have a few spots left. The two day event's gonna be literally a game changer. So it's nine ninety seven. Um, you know, we're going to be talking about what type of information you need to be providing, how to analyze these listings, and, and essentially put together a sales deck. So when you walk into a company, just the other day we walked into a multi-billion dollar company that's owned by Nestle. Multi-billion dollar company, and we now represent them on Amazon. You know, so there's definitely some experience on our end that we're going to share with you during this brand workshop, and it can change the way your entire business operates. So, geez, Amog, send me a DM with your email address. I'll get you an invoice. Are you part part of Ecom Kings? No, I don't know who that is. Do you buy your planters peanuts directly from the manufacturer? No, wholesaler. What are some tips on getting into doing Amazon with a partner? I answered that before. What needs to be done to gain buy box, bro? Answered that before. Do you put into account warehouse cost when calculating Asia profit? What's Asia profit? I don't know what Asia profit is, but um, no. So when we're looking at profitability for a product, we have a number in mind, uh, which we call our APPA, our average production, or APCPA, our average production cost per ASIN. So like we have a number, which is our expenses, plus our labor, plus our supplies, plus our rent, all that stuff, um, divided by the amount of units we produce. So we have a number of what we need to be making per item in order to remain profitable, but we do not deduct that from our gross profit calculation. Brian Lopez says, does my Amazon store have to have a specific niche or can I have different products from different categories? You can sell whatever you want on your Amazon store. The only way you need to have a separate niche for your Amazon store is if you have two Amazon accounts. If you have two Amazon accounts, one account needs to be completely different categories, completely different products than your other Amazon account. How much free time do you have with your business? Uh, I could have as much free time as I want. I create my free time. I prefer not to have free time. I prefer to be working because it's my happy place. But like free time, like my girl's coming up this weekend. You know, I'm gonna take Friday off, take Saturday off, take Sunday off, just chill. I can do that. You know, I can, I have free time. There's also a lot to get done, but I basically can, do as I please, you know, and that's the freedom of being a business owner and Sebastian as well. You know, he's got four little kids at home. Some days he doesn't get in till 10 o'clock because he's spending time with the kids. You know, other days he doesn't come in at all because he's spending time with the kids. He has to leave at, at you know, two in the afternoon because he's got to take the kids to the dentist. Like, so like life responsibility comes up and you just take care of it. Like yesterday, I had to leave in the middle of the day because my cleaning lady was at my house. I just left. You know, everybody's still working, putting in that work, growing our business. I was able to just go. All right, I'm gonna answer a few more questions then I gotta get out of here, it's getting late. It's 10.15, I got a 7.30 meeting. Uh, which software do you use to reprice and how do you set up to reprice? Uh, we use GoAura. And actually, if you're interested, send me a DM, I'll send you a discount code for Diora or GoAura. Um, for what we use to reprice, we use buy box competitive, so we don't want to go less than the buy box, we don't want to go more, we want to go buy box competitive. Thanks for answering, um, Felipe. In the YouTube videos, you can find that answer. <laughs> Thank you for answering our questions. What does your data scientist do? Uh, he researches data, he tracks data for us and compiles it all into one place so we can see historical data over the birth of our company uh, matched with historical data from Amazon so we could track trends. Uh, it's very expensive. 
what kind of coffee do you like? Uh, I pretty much like any coffee. I'm a light roast guy. Maybe medium roast, dark roast, not so much. Depends on really the flavor. I like espresso, cappuccino. I, I like all the coffees. There's never a coffee I didn't like. Amazon Za, just subscribed. I only started doing research about FBA yesterday. So newbie, newbie, newbiest newbie. Oh, that's awesome, Amazon Za, man. I'm excited to see your journey. And we're here to help, my friend. Um, how are you preparing for Q4? What tips would you give for a new seller three months in? Uh, stock up on inventory, my friend. Q4 gets crazy. You know, we're going to be seeing $4 million plus months. Q4 gets wild. You definitely don't want to run out of inventory. And you should be researching right now purchasing products for Q4. It's right around the corner. It's what, September? It's, it's less than two months away. You know, so it's, it's right there. It's super close. So you want to be stocked up for Q4. I'm going to answer a few more of these questions and then I'm going to break out of here. Um, Christian Domingo said, that's what's up, man. Hard work pays off. Absolutely. How many hours of sleep do you get every day? I would say between five and seven. Seven on a good day. Well, seven on a Saturday. Last night I... I didn't go to sleep till maybe 3.30 in the morning. I was up at 10, so what's that? Six hours? But then I took a sweet little nap on this couch behind me today. Um, how do you manage replenishments on so many SKUs at your scale? So we have a team of buyers who track inventory based on supplier. And they say, hey, this product, we're selling 10 a day. We only have, you know, 100 units left. That's 10 days of inventory based on the company's lead time. We got to order this and get this in the stock right now. Anytime, Philippe. Mike Gallagher. All right, these are the last two questions I'm going to answer. And then I'm outie, everybody. I appreciate you. Thank you for spending your Saturday or Sunday evening with me. Uh, Mike Gallagher said, why do you offer a course and don't say to help others and don't say to help other sellers, this is competition. Um, so we offer a course because Amazon, listen, whether, whether we have a course or not, people are going to sell on Amazon. So why not teach people how to actually generate profits and make money on Amazon so they can remain profitable? Right, because people are going to flock to Amazon. It happens every day, whether we have a course or we don't. So why not train those Amazon sellers to become Amazon professionals instead of just failing on Amazon? You know, I know what it's like to fail at things. I failed at dozens of different things in my life. And I, I wish I had guidance. I wish someone said, hey, Eric, Give me this sum of money and I will guide you and you won't have any failures. And if you have any failures, you could bring them to me and we'll fix them together. I'll be like, what? What's that going to cost me? 5,000, 10,000? Let me know because I'm willing to pay for that. I'm willing to pay for information. So I don't see it as competition. And really, I like a nice, healthy competition on Amazon. A, it keeps me motivated. B, it keeps listings BSR down. C, it's just good for business. So yeah, Mike Galler, that's, it's actually, that's it. You know, that's it. And we have so much knowledge. It would be, it would, we would be doing a disservice to the community to not offer a course with access to all the information that we have. Between Sebastian and myself, we have over 12 years of Amazon experience. We've sold over $150 million on Amazon. So the information up here can really help skyrocket your sales so it's like we would be doing the community a disservice and really ourselves for a disservice if we didn't have a course no question just wanted to say appreciate it it's okay take a break when working every day at home just want to succeed so bad i don't know awesome I appreciate answering all the questions and being open. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No problem. Thank you for everything. No problem. Aaron Betterfield, when you're trying to calculate to shipping to FBA, how's the best way to do it? Um, so we usually, listen, you can healthily add, you know, 50 cents per item. And that will be about your cost per unit. 50 cents, 50 to 75 cents. And that's really on the high end. The more volume you sell, um, the lower that will be. Right now, our cost per pound is right around 3 cents. So, super low.
you know super low but the more inventory you sell the cheaper will be i think a good number to start is 50 cents if you add 50 cents per item you, you're pretty much right on point there all right this is the last question that i'm Audi. thank you so much for joining me corey mxnd said is it okay to take a break eric yeah of course it's okay to take a break you can take as many breaks as you want you know it's up to you. If you need five breaks, take five breaks. And right now I'm about to actually take a break. I'm about to get out of here. I'm gonna wind down here. I gotta be up in a couple hours, head to the office. Thank you everybody for joining me. I respect each and every one of you. Have a lovely Sunday evening. Stay grateful and stay lit.